Hi there, folks. Hope you're all doing well. This is going to be another one of those uh, relatively short economy tutorials, and uh, I figured I would start with probably the most important thing when it comes to the economy in the game, and that is your credit rating. So the gist of credit rating, if you just want to see how to read it, basically the, the best credit ratings have uh, letters closest to the beginning of the alphabet, like triple A has more letters and uh, might have a plus. And then from there, you see minuses, you start losing letters, then you go down to B, and then you see, you know, go from triple B down to B, B minus, and then it's C plus. And it, anyways, it's <clears throat> basically you want to start at the beginning of the alphabet, have a lot of A's and uh, a plus. It, it's hard to do that, but <clears throat> in the game, uh, you got to maintain a certain credit rating, even if you really don't care about the economy, because uh, if you don't and it gets too low, you can't build buildings, which, you know, if you don't care about the economy, it's not a big deal. But then you can't recruit troops, and you can't buy weapons. So it will hurt your ability to just do the military stuff, even if that's all you want to do. And it's affected by a number of things. But for the most part, the two things that affect credit rating is the total amount of debt. The more debt you have, all things being equal, the worse your credit rating, and what does the outlook look like? So what's the surplus? Is it positive? Is it negative? How positive? How negative is it? <clears throat> and, and those are, I would say, the, the kind of two big factors that affect your, your credit rating. And the money on hand will also kind of tell you something. So right now, if you have a positive surplus, money will gradually be put back into this treasury. So this will increase until you hit the point where it's time to buy back bonds. And once that happens, then your national debt decreases and so all things being equal, you expect your credit rating to improve a little bit. Because what happens is usually, and we won't see this because this is pretty late in a, in a campaign, but usually uh, you start, both sides will start with really high credit rating, and then they take on debt, and their surplus turns negative. And so gradually their, their credit rating will, will come down over time. Uh, and that's happening because money is flowing out of the treasury, so they're taking on more debt. And basically how negative, how large the negative is here affects how rapidly you deplete the money and how rapidly your credit rating deteriorates. So what can you do about it? Well, if you haven't started a campaign, one of the things you can do and be a little bit proactive is to kind of bolster yourself by taking one of the railroad acts, both the union and the CSA. They have a respective railroad act that will improve the credit rating by plus two notches. Again, the notches, if you don't really understand them, there are lots of them, triple B plus, triple B, triple B minus, double B plus, and so on. And so two notches is going back two steps. Basically, it's as if you are uh, buying back debt, but without really paying for it. I know that sounds weird. It's, it's not quite like erasing your debt, but it's kind of like that. I guess the other way to look at it would be if you had uh, two economies with $500 million in, in debt and an equal surplus, uh, if one side bought back their credit rating, you know, maybe they'd be at triple B plus and the other would be two notches lower, which I think is triple B minus or, or whatever it is. So <clears throat> that's what happens when it says improve the, the credit rating. And, and that's what you probably want to do, even if you want to ignore the economy altogether. You just want to get that credit rating up high enough so you can go back to recruiting and uh, buying weapons. So that's one way. Now, if your campaign's already started and like you're looking, you're here for this video because you know you got to figure out how to how to fix things, then it's it's probably in a, a fairly obvious place. And the union has more options when it comes to improving the credit rating through acts than does the the CSA. So. Both sides will have the war bonds. War bonds in the vanilla game will improve the credit rating by two notches in exchange for losing 10% of public wealth, which really isn't that big of a hit as it pertains to national morale. And so that one is, is good. I usually hold that one in the pocket in case I, I kind of go into a credit emergency and I need it. Uh, then I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. The other acts here, Bank Act 1, is going to improve the credit rating. And the union also has access to Bank Act 2, which the CSA does not. And so that gives you another opportunity to improve your credit rating by two notches. You may or may not know, but Feed Europe 1 
I believe it's a typo when it now reports the credit rating as negative, where before it was positive. Uh, but Feed Europe too, if you're willing to, to commit to that agricultural tree, which is not, not actually a terrible idea, uh, but we'll talk about kind of indirect ways to, to deal with the credit rating later. So those are acts that will go ahead and directly improve the, the credit rating for you. And then there is one project, the Almighty Improved Credit Rating Project. It's one of the most expensive in the game just for the, the first take, and then it gradually gets more expensive after that. But it is well worth the money because you spend you know, a couple million dollars. Even if you're spending more than $10 million, you're usually buying back tens of millions, if not more than $100 million worth of debt. And so it is, it is ridiculously under-costed. So make sure to be able to have the subsidies to do that. You want to be progressing through the funding tree because each one of these is going to unlock more subsidies. And then in your finances tab, you take that economy slider and you slide it over as far as you need so that you have the subsidies to keep the, the improved credit rating going. And then you can largely ignore a lot of the, the economy stuff after that. Now, those are the kind of direct ways you, you would just improve the credit rating, kind of not, not doing anything else. The other ways are indirect, and that's uh, tackling the things that affect the surplus. So... <coughs> Again, a, a, an actual positive surplus is good because it's putting money back in the bank, and that's actually going to buy down your, your national debt. Uh, the expense side, there, there are usually opportunities for efficiencies. So I would, I'm generally recommending, particularly if you're struggling to the point that you need this video, I would say there's almost no buildings that you need to build. Even railroads you don't need to build for reasons I've explained and shown elsewhere probably not going to make their money back. Naval upkeep, I don't know if you're going big navy, small navy. Again, if you're struggling with the economy, you're probably not. Maybe you're struggling because you're too big in the navy. Put your ships in harbor you're not using and maybe just stop building a bunch of ships. Uh, if you're not doing well with a small number, probably getting a lot more won't won't help you that much because you haven't, you haven't yet learned how to use them. Supply depots, try not to build them in places where they're likely to get lost because they're expensive to stock. And uh, if you take the opponents, uh, good for you. Don't let them take it back. Uh, burn theirs down if, if you're going to lose it. But <coughs> uh, that's that's another way to kind of kind of limit some of your costs. The, the biggest way is to go after army upkeep. It is almost always your single biggest expense. One of the big sub costs in there, besides feeding your troops, is their weapons. And so if you import a lot of like, really good tier weapons. It costs you at the beginning, and then there is an ongoing upkeep cost for those weapons that is higher than more cheaply produced domestic weapons. So <laughs> you've already done that, or if you've already done that, there's really not too much you can do about those decisions. But what you can do is plow your military subsidies into logistics reform. Because what this does is it will decrease those army upkeep costs. I don't know why it's not showing up here, but it's by 5% each time you do it. So both that and the improved credit rating you can take multiple times. And just like with improved credit rating, you're going through there. For those military subsidies, you're moving through policy one, military two, maybe even military three. I mean, certainly you would probably want to go to military two anyways for other reasons. I'll try not to get into that stuff too much in this video because that's, that's not what we're doing here. So that's how you reduce the, the cost. Again, th there's something to do there, but I think you're probably going to have better luck trying to bring in more revenue. And uh, back to the policy tree, you know, it, it's staying here with government funding. You have to go through this tree if you're going to try to get the other credit rating stuff anyways. I strongly recommend the Tariff Act. If you're new to the game and struggling, don't worry. Especially if you know something about economics, don't worry. The game doesn't actually model the negative effects of tariffs on you very well. And so it's pretty much just going to be more, more revenue. You can see that tariff revenues uh, here at this point in, in this campaign that is the single largest source of my revenue. And I think I started the, the campaign with 250, 300 million every 12 months. And you can see now it's, it's up uh, not almost double what it was when I when I started. Great notes one and two are not bad. Uh, I, if you're going to take them, I would say take them early in a campaign so that they have time to, to really uh, generate value over the course of the campaign. If you think the campaign might be over in a year, it might not be the, might not be the best. All right, uh, confiscation is is not bad as the Union if you have a lot of armies in the CSA. 
if you don't, like, if it's 1861 and you're still building your armies and you don't really think you're going to have a lot in the CSA until 62, I would hold off on doing this until 62 because it will give the CSA an ongoing support buff and you really won't be able to use the supply efficiency. Uh, pull that trigger when it's right. When you're the CSA and you have impressment, yours is better because it's your CSA armies in the CSA. And if you're fighting pretty defensively, that's going to be almost all your armies. And again, it's a 20% discount rather than a 15% discount. And with the CSA, it's a one-time cost to support rather than an ongoing one. So that is that. I like the Revenue Axe. Uh, you can see in here, I've done two Revenue Axe, and that has brought in a lot of money on a 12-month basis. Remember, this is all every 12 months. Uh, so <clears throat> I, I like Revenue Axe 1 and 2. And then, so if you're playing vanilla, then this unlocks after the November 1862 elections. You can go Government Funding 3, and then you can either go for the Bank Act for direct credit rating boost, or you can do Revenue Act to get more revenue. Uh, depending on how bad you need credit rating, you might want to go Bank Act 1 so that you can also go, go Bank Act 2 uh, if, if you want. But that is really where, if you're going to go the indirect approach of improving your surplus, I think you make it up mostly by, by focusing on revenues and then just playing efficiently uh, to, to limit your, your expenses. I'll just mention in, in closing two things, if you haven't, haven't heard me say them elsewhere. There is in the game a, a kind of default nerfing of your credit rating and your debt until the 1862 elections and Chapter 3 unlocks. So if it's at that point in kind of late 62 and, you know, you're struggling with credit rating, just know that after the elections, your credit rating is probably going to improve over the next few months just because of how the background game works. So it's not magic. It's not uh, you know, inexplicable. It, it is there, and that's, that's what's going on. Uh, so be cognizant of that. And uh, in terms of uh, just another indirect strategy, I mentioned that tariffs were big earlier. I think there's a lot more opportunity as the, the union. If you want to go through the agricultural tree, I mentioned you know government funding is good, military at least up to two is good. But <laughs> if you do push hard for the agricultural tree and you do a little bit of industry, you can get northern roots. But even if you don't, uh, when you get to ag three, remember that that's going to increase your trade potential by 25%. And then you can do it again here. Uh, just think about that trade potential and its its effect on tariffs. Uh, that might be another good indirect way of, of improving your credit rating. All right, folks. Uh, I do want to keep this short and keep it focused on this one all-important topic. So I hope this did help. Uh, if you did like the video, uh, please do throw a like down just so that uh, they, they know to push this video to more folks who might also be looking for it. And, uh, yeah, hope to bring be uh, bringing you more of this in the future.